You know when you've just made a cup of tea and you think it is ready for you to drink it? But it's not. In fact, it is actually burning my hands a little bit. So let me just put this back for now. <laughs> Hi friends and welcome to a new video. I really hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are, whatever it is you are doing. Thank you so much for joining me today for a very long video probably because anytime I film one of these I get too excited talking about all of these beautiful books about the ones I've read, the ones I am excited to read, um, but I always love filming this video. This will be my entire classic literature collection. And the reason I filmed this video is, one, because I love classics, I love collecting them and not only see all of the beautiful editions that we have for them, but also being able to hold the stories and all of these words which were written so long ago, a few of them only a few decades, a few others centuries ago, and I always find that fascinating. I love reading classics and I also love filming this video at least once a year and give you an updated collection because I know that a lot of you, just like me, love reading classics or maybe even if you don't, you do appreciate looking at some beautiful covers, which is also one of the points of this video, honestly. <laughs> I do love collecting beautiful books and I do own a lot of them, especially when it comes to classics because they have so many different editions and I just love staring at them to be honest. <laughs> so today I'm here to show you all of the ones that I own. I can miss a few, I, I feel like I always do whenever I stop filming this video or whenever I'm editing it and I'm ready to publish it. I always noticed that I forgot one or two books but that's okay, I will do my best to show you all of them. A few of them have specific editions such as the Oxford Classics or the Penguin English Library and a few others are just separate editions. In fact, a few of them you can already spot right here. There's my beautiful edition of the picture of Dorian Gray, for instance, um, and that's because most of my classics are right behind me. <laughs> this shelf is almost entirely dedicated to them, but we also have a few on this side and a few other on this side. So right now I'm going to grab a few of them. We'll start with this side, which holds most of my children's classics collections, but also a few other random ones and then we will move on to this side where I keep a lot more of them and then finally this shelf which is where I keep most of them anyway so I hope you enjoyed this video let me know which editions are your favorites or I would also love to hear what your favorite classic is or maybe your top three classics feel free to tell me how many you want because personally I also cannot pick a favorite Dorian Gray is indeed one of my all-time favorite books not only classics but honestly I have a lot of them so I would love to know yours as well but with that said let's move on and I'm gonna show you my wonderful collection I really love it <laughs> so let's start with a few children's classics I think let's start with my puffin classics so we have a Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens a collection of fairy tales by Hans Christian Andersen then we have the princess and the goblin by George MacDonald it's so pretty. I also have this one, which is the only one that I haven't read from this collection, and it is Tales of the Greek Heroes by Roger Lanslin Green. I believe this author does a lot of collections like this one. I really like the design of these covers. I think they fit the books perfectly. Like I said, this is the only one that I haven't read. A Christmas Carol is one of my all-time favorite books. I adore it with my entire heart. Um, and I reread it every year, every winter, and I also watch the movie adaptation, or rather the movies adaptations, because I like all of them. Fairy tales are something that I absolutely adore as well. You will be able to see a lot of different collections on this video, so just be prepared for that. <laughs> and then finally, The Princess and the Goblin I also read. I thought it was okay, but I saw the movie when I was a kid and that is the version that I really prefer because I guess because of nostalgia, but 
there you go those are my little puffing classics now i also have one of my favorite editions ever this is heidi by joanna spirey which is again one of my favorites um i love this edition so much it is also from penguin and it is the sisterhood collection i believe it is inspired by the international women's day and it also has in the same collection a little princess and of green gables pride and prejudice little women and the railway children so there are six books in this collection i would love to own all of them hopefully one day but heidi is the one that means the most to me i love it with my entire soul um on the back you have all of these flowers and the mountains and i believe all of them have a quote from the book as well this one says i would a million times rather be with grandfather on the mountains than anywhere else in the world it's so cute <laughs> Moving on to the Puffin in Boom collection, I can never get tired of these editions, look at how stunning they look together. Um, these are all such wonderful books that I have been meaning to reread, they always bring so much joy to my heart. I've read all of them and love all of them, so we have A Little Princess by Frances Hutchson Burnett. I think that's it. I always struggle with her name. I'm so sorry, but I think that's it. <laughs> Love this book so much. Then again, Heidi by Joanna Spirey. Anna Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery, which just screams autumn to me and coziness and such a lovely feeling. And then, of course, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. All of these books are so cozy and perfect to read during any time of the year, really, but it's funny because I associate them with different seasons, at least most of them. So for instance, Heidi, I associate a lot with spring, then Anne of Green Gables with autumn, of course, because living in a world filled of Octobers is the most wonderful thing, isn't it? <laughs> and then we have Little Women, which I associate a lot with winter. And then we have Little Princess, which I guess will be perfect for any season, but maybe fall or winter are the ones that I associate this one with the most, I guess. But I recommend all of them, of course. They are all wonderful with amazing female protagonists and I love them. <laughs> Speaking of Little Women, I also own this stunning edition, which is the most recent one. Um, it is the one that they show on the recent movie adaptation from 2019, is it? can't remember. Wow. I, I, it must be 2019, right? Or is it 2018? I can't remember. Anyhow, it's the one they show on the movie and it is absolutely stunning it has such a classical look to it i love the gold details and just this reddish color it makes me think of a library book and it is just stunning it does have a few pictures of the movie which makes it even more special and unique i guess so yes i have this one it is stunning it was actually a gift from one of my friends from booktube and i will forever be incredibly grateful because i love displaying it on my shelves of course it's stunning <laughs> we have a few more children's classics so let me try and separate them by their different editions okay first i have these ones these are also the wordsworth editions as well so first we have The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. This is one of the first books I remember reading and it had such a huge impact on me when I was a kid and it still does. I know it is considered a book for kids but honestly I always thought it was much more fitting and necessary for adults to read. So it is wonderful. Then, of course, I have Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, which is a book that will also appear frequently on this video because I have a lot of editions of this book. It is one of my favorite stories. Not for everyone, of course, but I love how nonsensical it is. So that's Alice in Wonderland. Then there's this one. It is such a cute story and it is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. I have been meaning to reread this one actually because it is one of those books that has a much deeper meaning or significance than it would appear on the surface. So I would love to reread it eventually, but look at it. It's so cute. <laughs> 
Then the only one I haven't read from this collection is The Railway Children by E. Nesbitt. The quote on the back says, don't ask me no questions and I won't tell you no lies. I don't know this story actually, but I know a lot of people love this book, so I am of course very interested in reading it. And then, of course, another edition of Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. And you can see that I also have plenty of editions of this book because you can never get enough, you know? <laughs> I love how all of them have very specific details on the covers about the story and also on the back. Let me just show you a few more examples. So this is what it looks like on the back of this one. Then here they are having a picnic. Look at them, <laughs> so cute. And then we have, of course, Alice right there. It's a little hard to see because of the color, but I hope you can see that. And then finally, the little prince. We have, of course, the fox and the stars, and it is perfect. So I've read most of these as well and love them. I think I think I love pretty much every single children's classic I've ever read, I think, um, except for one which we will talk about later. Maybe now, actually? Yep, it's right there, but I will let you know in a second. <laughs> I also own these three books from the same collection. I believe this is also called the Puffin in Bloom collection, actually. Um, it says Puffin Books, so they must be different editions. I'm not sure if they are older editions or anything, but I think you can find them very easily. Pretty much all of these that I am mentioning, I think you can find easily online. We have The Secret Garden, again by Frances Hutchinson Burnett. I like this book, but I prefer A Little Princess much more. Um, but this one is very charming as well. Then again, The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham, because why not? It is so cute. And then Alice in Wonderland with the rabbit. I love this cover. I love all of them, but... <laughs> They, again, have very cute details on the back, showing a few elements of the story and a little quote as well. Now, from this collection, I only own these two. I think... Are these called Puffin Books as well? I think they might be. Yes, Puffin Books. So they must be just different editions of the same um, publisher and editor and everything, but... These are The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum and The Call of the Wild by Jack London. This is the one that I was mentioning before. I tried reading it and I just couldn't get myself into the story. I'm not sure if it is because I believe there is some animal cruelty here, but honestly, I was just a little bored when I started the book. I didn't know exactly where the story was going and at the time I couldn't push myself to continue reading it. Hopefully one day, let me know if you've read this one and your thoughts, I would be curious to hear them, but these are the ones that I own. The Wizard of Oz I also read and watched the movie, of course, it is a classic. I do think I prefer the movie just because, again, nostalgia, but still the book is cute as well. Two random editions of Alice in Wonderland, because why not? <laughs> this one is published by Macmillan's children's books and it is illustrated by Sir John Tenniel, I think. It is absolutely stunning. I love all the details on the tree. Can you see that? All the red hearts. And then you have the Cheshire cat, of course, and Alice right there. It is a very simple looking one, but I think that's precisely why it works. It also has some cute illustrations on the inside. Um, let me see this page. It had a lot of them. Oh, I love this one. I love this one. It is the one from the cover, but it is one of my favorites. Alice just talking to the cat on the tree. I love it. But yes, you have a lot of examples, as you can see. It's very pretty. And then on a completely different note, I have this one, which is probably one of the creepiest covers I own because of the cat mainly. His head is split of his body and he has three eyes and then the entire look of this cover is quite um, mysterious I would say and a little creepy. The back as well, the rabbit has three eyes too. Can you see that? It's like he's lurking on the corner to eat you basically. <laughs> So this is such a fun cover. It does have deckled edges, which is something I know a lot of people don't like, so I thought I would mention it, but I don't mind them at all. Look at this illustration of the cards. They look like little devils. I love that. <laughs> so yes, on one hand, a very cute, simple cover, and then you have this one, which is very spooky. 
these are the last children's classics that I have on that shelf, I believe. So, first I have another gorgeous edition of The Little Prince. This was actually a gift from one of my patrons. Even before she became a patron, Kim has been an incredible supporter of me and my channel and I really, really appreciate that. Um, this was such a thoughtful gift. I absolutely loved it, of course. Look at how beautiful it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. Like. The design and then the golden pages it's so pretty look at this illustration it's stunning it's stunning i love it um so yes that's the one that i have i was trying to look for the edition it says this is a chiltern publishing book all right an imprint of atlantic publishing so there you go in case you are curious i believe there are also other books from this collection then like i told you i have some fairy tales collections and i believe these are also not all of them but the first ones that i could find first one i have this one that says grimm's fairy tales this is the classics reimagined edition with a lot of illustrations i love this book look at it once again it has a bit of a creepy vibe but that's one of the reasons why i love it all the chapter pages have a color associated with them and then each one of the tales has some illustrations dedicated to them can you see how a little scary that is <laughs> but i love that i bought this book ages ago read it loved it and then once again, we have more of a creepy version of the tales, and then I also have this one, which is the illustrated Grimm's fairy tales. And it looks like, I was gonna say a fairy tale, but that's obvious. But you know what I mean, it reminds you of an enchanted castle or a magical village or something. It is so pretty, obviously more... Um, created towards children it is much more children friendly i would say even looking at the illustrations style you can see that it is a bit more um, made for children but i love that it reminds me of my time as a kid and um, when i listened to these stories and fell in love with them completely um i love the chapter pages they are some of my favorites but then all the other illustrations it is such an engaging reading experience because you read these beautiful stories and then you get to stare at these stunning illustrations. I love this so much. <laughs> From the Everyman's Library children's classics, I have these three. I've only not read one of them. Um, and that was King Arthur and His Knights on the Round Table by Roger Lanslin Green. Again, by this author because he does collect different stories, I believe, and publishes them. So that's the only one that I still need to read, but I am very curious about it. And then, of course, I have Little Red Riding Hood and other stories, but I think this one is my favorite. I'm not sure anymore. I will need to reread it, but anyhow, love that. And then, of course, Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, which is one of those books that I definitely want to reread. Um, it is a much darker story than I was expecting. Obviously, I wasn't looking for a version exactly like Disney made, because Disney always, you know, changes the story a lot <laughs> in order to be more kids friendly again but this is way darker than i was hoping but it also has a beautiful message to it so i will eventually reread it i have a few notes on it but would like to explore its themes a lot more so another edition of alice in wonderland <laughs> I told you, I told you, I have a lot of them. Um, this is not exactly one of my absolute favorites, but I just think it is so funny <laughs> because it has the queen um, in a type of illustration that I've never seen her at. It makes her look more vulnerable for some reason. I don't know if it is because she looks much older and has a funny look to her or something, but it's definitely a version of the Queen of Hearts that I had never seen before, so I just needed to grab this edition. Um, it is beautiful though, don't get me wrong. Um, it's just because I own so many others that this is not exactly my favorite, but I still love it, of course, otherwise I wouldn't have it. And also the illustrations also have this older appeal to them. It reminds me of those old children's books that I used to own with a lot of illustrations. This is the type of illustration that I think about um, when I think about my childhood. So look at it. A few more examples. It is such a cute book. I, I love it. <laughs> 
And then finally, from this pile, I have a very recent edition. It was also a gift from a subscriber, which was so kind of her. And that's this one. This is Charles Dickens' Christmas Stories, a classic collection for Yuletide. Like I mentioned before, I love A Christmas Carol, but still need to read his other works for Christmas, which I definitely plan to do this winter. So this will be read very soon in December, of course. It includes a lot of them. Let me see a few examples. It has A Christmas Carol, The Haunted Man, The Battle of Life, and so on. It has a few of his short stories, I believe those are, um, and I've never read any of them. So that will absolutely change by the end of this year. This is such a stunning copy as well. I say that about all of them, I know, but <laughs> it's true. Look at it. All right, next I have a bit of a mixture between Portuguese classics or other ones that I just have the Portuguese translations of. And that's because when I filmed this video um, last year, I got a comment that said, I love the video, but I wish you had included some more of your Portuguese classics. And I thought, you are absolutely right. Why didn't I do that? It's silly. So here we go. I'm going to show you my Portuguese classics. Again, I might miss a few also because a few of them are right on my top shelves, such as, for instance, I have a whole collection of Fernando Pessoa's work. Um, these are just a few of his shorter collections that I own, but my main books of him, let's say, are right on my top shelves, so it's hard for me to get them, but these are a few examples. The first one is actually an English edition, and it says The Poet with Many Faces, a biography and anthology. So if you are looking for some Portuguese author's recommendations, I could not recommend Fernando Pessoa enough. He is an entire world for you to discover. He is not just an author, he was a genius. Um, he is my favorite, I love him. And I believe if you are looking to explore some of his work, then I would recommend this little collection because it explains a little bit um, what it feels like to read his works and how his mind worked and everything. So this is amazing. But then of course I have more. <laughs> I have this one, which is a similar book, but it is in Portuguese. It says Antologia Minima. I've actually not read this entire book yet, but it is a collection of his poetry, which I always love. <laughs> I am very biased towards him because he is my favorite. So this contains a lot of his poems and also some images of his original text work. Like, can you see that? That's absolutely fascinating to me. <laughs> Another poetry collection by him that I own is this one. It is called O Mendigo e Outros Contos. It does have mainly some of his short stories, I believe, but once in a while you also get some poetry. Um, he wrote a lot of different texts, so this is also another anthology. Another Portuguese classic that I own is this one. It is called A Queda de um Anjo by Camilo Castelo Branco, which um, he is an author that I'm not the biggest fan of, but people keep recommending this one to me, so maybe I will enjoy this one. We'll see. Hopefully. Not Portuguese classics, but a few translations that I own are these three. So first I have Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert, but this is the Portuguese edition. It is beautiful. I love this design and I also love that it is um, printed on the hardback itself. It doesn't have a dust jacket or anything, which I always appreciate. It is absolutely stunning and a very kind gift from one of my best friends. You guessed it, another edition of Alice. <laughs> this time it is in Portuguese. I might try and read it in Portuguese one day just to see how it is. I think I have listened to the Portuguese audiobook when I was a kid actually, but it would be fun to see how I felt about the translation now, but yes, that's another one that I own of Alice. And another translated book is this one. This is O Mercado dos Duendes, or I think that in English it is The Goblin Market or something by Cristina Rossetti. I still have to read this one, and this is an edition that I love because it has both the English and the Portuguese versions side by side, which I always appreciate. I think it is such a nice touch. And also this edition, it is quite simple, but I love it for some reason. Once again, I think it is because it reminds me a lot of a library book. I love the color as well. So 
definitely plan to read this one eventually. Another Portuguese classic that I own is Felizmente Aluar, de Luís de Stal Monteiro. This is a play that we had to read for school, we even watched the play itself. I really enjoyed it, even though most of my colleagues didn't. <laughs> and a very controversial author here in Portugal is José Saramago. I really like his writing style, but most people didn't like him as a person. <laughs> I get why he has some very strong beliefs, especially when it comes to religion and politics as well, but his books are masterpieces, in my opinion. I still have to read a lot of them. The ones that I own are O Murial do Convento, which again I had to read for school, and I also own Ensaio sobre a Cegueira, which I believe in English it is called Blindness. This is amazing. I read it years ago, so I barely remember anything of the plot itself, but the themes and ideas are genius, and I would love to reread this one soon-ish, I would say. I highly recommend this one if you are planning to try some Portuguese literature, but then another author that I really like is Esat Queiroz, and this is the book that I had to read for school as well. It is called Os Maias, or The Maias, I guess, in English, because it is the name of a family. It does, as always, involve a big critique on Portuguese society, and it is brilliant. I highly recommend this one, even though you might miss a few of the references, because he does talk about a lot of Portuguese figures and places and everything, but I do think you would still enjoy this book a lot, or at least appreciate it, even if you are not Portuguese. So, a few other translations that I have are these little books. They all have a very vintage look to them. Um, these are some of my father's favorite editions, actually, and I think these were all given to me by him, so that's very kind. Um, and I would like to collect more of these because I honestly, I don't think I will read these editions because, because usually I do prefer reading English translations. I'm not sure if that's because I'm more used to it or because whenever I read in Portuguese, I always imagine the author being Portuguese as well. And it kind of, I don't know, it messes with my head a little bit <laughs> for some reason, but I don't know. I just like owning them anyway. And we have Spartacus by Howard Fast, Dr. Jivago by Boris Pasternak, which I am terrified of reading it, but it will happen eventually. And um, oh, I don't know this one in English, actually. I don't know the title in English, but I will look for it. It is by Evan Hunter. Um, I feel like I've heard about this one. I feel like I've seen the English title somewhere, but I cannot remember it right now. But I will try to look it up and insert it right here. <laughs> and then I have this one by John Steinbeck, which I also don't know the English name of. That's weird. It should be here, I feel like, but I cannot find it. Um, anyhow, I will try and look for it again. But in Portuguese, you say É um Deus desconhecido, and then this one is Semente de Violência. So there you go. These are all, in case you are curious, from the um, Europa America editor. So you can find them in old bookstores or places like that. I'm not sure you can find them online, I don't think. But in case you look for some independent bookstores in Portugal, I am sure you can find plenty of these. And another translated book that I own is this one, 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, or 100 Anos de Solidão in Portuguese. I tried reading this one a while ago and I got so confused that I gave up at the time. I don't think I was in the right mind space for this book, but hopefully I will try it again. <laughs> also because I know Emma loves it and it is one of her favorite books, if not her favorite book of all time, so I'm definitely curious to read it. Um, I am somewhat familiar with the story, it is just a lot of information, a lot of characters at the same time, and when I tried reading it, it didn't go so well, but hopefully that will change. I do love this cover, though. As for my Portuguese classics, I want to show you a couple more. So first we have this one, which I finished very recently. It is O Crime do Padre Amaro, or The Crime of Father Amaru. Um, it is by Asad Queiroz, who I just mentioned previously. Um, he is an incredible author, and I am looking forward to reading more of his books. But then I also want to give a shout out to Alexandre O'Neill. I have two poetry collections. This one is called Já Cá Não Está Quem Falou. And this one is Poesias Completas. These are two 
Portuguese anthologies. Um, in fact, that's the case with most of my Portuguese classics. Most of them are those very big books um, filled with either short stories or poetry or even full novels, but they are um, collector's editions really. Let me show you an example. So I have this one, for instance. This is huge, of course, because it does have um, if not all of them, then the majority of the poems by Sofia de Melo Brenner Anderson, who is, again, amazing. Unfortunately, she died a few years ago, but I'm glad she wrote all of these texts because they give me a lot of comfort. She wrote a lot about the earth and the sea, and it is beautiful to read about. So that's what I mean with pretty much a lot of my Portuguese classics being this huge, it is because they are collections of some sorts. So I really love this one. It is stunning and I love this author so much. And of course, I also have to mention The Book of Disquiet or O Livro do Desassossego by Fernando Pessoa. It is one of my favorite books. It is one of the books that made me who I am today, or at least it helped me figure out who I was as a person. I read it back when I was maybe 14 years old. I cannot really remember perfectly, but um, it meant a lot to me. It still does. I have reread it since and plan to keep rereading it um, forever, basically. These are little snippets of thoughts that he had while wandering around through Lisbon and it feels like a very personal collection while also being a little... Sometimes it feels a little delusional as well because it's like he's not in his own body, he transcends into something else while he is talking to us about all of these feelings. So it is a very special book to me. Um, it just means a lot to the person that I am. So that's The Book of Disquiet or O Livro do Desassossego by the wonderful Fernando Pessoa. All right, I think that's it for this bookshelf. Now I'm gonna move on to the one that's right behind me, which is where I keep most of my classics. So let me grab them. But first, let me also drink a cup of tea because I have been talking for hours. So let's go in order. I'm gonna start on my bottom shelf and then go all the way up. So first we have <laughs> this beautiful book of the selected works or collected works, sorry, of Oscar Wilde. It includes the picture of Dorian Gray, his plays, his poems, his stories. It is the perfect book to have if you, like me, <laughs> are a big Oscar Wilde fan. Um, in fact, I still need to read a lot of his works, but just like the Book of Disquiet by Fernand Pessoa, the picture of Dorian Gray helped me figure out how I felt about the world in general. It is such an important book to me and ever since then Oscar Wilde became one of my absolute favorite authors. I don't think I've ever written such a beautiful book. <laughs> like The Picture of Dorian Gray, it was the only book that made me cry from how stunningly, beautifully, perfectly written it is. It is unbelievable how someone can put words together like that. It's fascinating. So yes, it means a lot to me. And this is just a collection of all of his works, I believe. And it is so beautiful. Um, then I also have three more gorgeous books, which are these ones. This is the Seasons collection. So I have Persuasion by Jane Austen, then Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, and finally A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Look, how epic this look together. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and these are limited editions as well. Let me see an example. So this one, it is the book 3021 out of 10,000 copies, which makes it all the more special, you know? Just look at the first page and then this beautiful design. This looks so creative um, and they all have a quote from the book on the back as well. I love when they do that. Um, I know a few of them are part of the winter collection and we have spring as well. I'm not sure exactly where each one of these fits, but I love them so much. <laughs> I also have this vintage edition of The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Unfortunately, this book didn't work for me exactly, but I appreciate what it does. Um, I believe they did other dystopian novels in this collection, such as 1984 and A Brave New World. I'm not sure about 
if there are any more of them but these look so cool and they look perfect for a dystopian novel because they are quite dark and a little unsettling as well i love it but this is the only one that i currently own from this collection then i have some of my favorite covers which are the charles dickens <laughs> vintage editions oh my gosh they are stunning look at them oh my god i love them so much with a quote on the back this says it was the best of times it was the worst of times which is one of the best introductions of any book i've ever read this is a tale of two cities again love it with my whole heart and then i have hard times which i still need to read and the quote says facts alone are wanted in life plant nothing else and root out everything else and of course, I couldn't film this video without showing you these babies. These are some of the most popular and loved editions of the Penguin Classics because look at them, right? Oh my gosh. So I have The Pearl by John Steinbeck, which I still need to read. I don't think I've read any of these really, so I need to work on that. But The Pearl by John Steinbeck in this gorgeous green color. Then I have Tales from 1001 Nights. It is translated by Malcolm C. Lyons and Ursula Lyons, introduced and annotated by Robert Irwin. Oh, wait, yeah, of course, this is probably a collection of a lot of stories by a lot of different authors. So there you go, it is beautiful as well. Then also Inferno by Dante, which is one of those classics that I want to read before I die. So fingers crossed, <laughs> but I really want to read this one. It does have both the Italian and English version here so that's absolutely perfect I would love to learn Italian really I've never actually learned it but I do understand a bit of it because of my singing course sometimes I had to sing in different languages and one of them very frequently was Italian actually so I had to comprehend a few words and expressions so I would love to one day study this gorgeous language but I feel like reading a book in English with the Italian version on the side might be a big help. So that's this one. And then finally, another stunning edition of Les Mis by Victor Hugo. I also love that all of them come with this little ribbon bookmark. It makes them look so fancy and gorgeous, of course, because all of them are, right? <laughs> Then I have these two classics. These are, um, how are these called? Oh, I can't remember. The Penguin something something? <laughs> Wait, where? Oh, yeah. It's right here. Um, the Penguin Drop Caps. Okay, collectible books from A to Z. So there's a book for each one of the letters. I, of course, own F and J. This is, again, Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. And this is A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce. I am highly intimidated by both of these books, so let me know if you've read any of them and what your thoughts were, because I'm a little scared to read any of these, but I will eventually, of course. And these are just very fun editions as well. I feel like when you have the entire collection, it must look so cool on your bookshelves, right? <laughs> Another two classics that I still need to read. First, I have Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. This is one of those, one of the most famous dystopian novels, I feel like, and I still have to read this one. And then I also have a much, much older one, <laughs> and that's The Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. Um, I think whenever I read this book, I will take it very slowly because it feels like a big deal, you know, to read this book. I don't know. And also, this is such a cute edition. I love it because it looks like a notebook with the elastic band and everything. And then the material, it is so soft, but then you can open it just like a notebook. It is adorable. I found it at a Portuguese bookstore a few years ago and fell completely in love. I know they have another books from this collection. Let me see if I can find the name. It is from Race Point Publishing. Yeah, I, I think they have a lot more other books from this collection, which I definitely plan to get because look at it. It's adorable. I've never seen a, an edition like this for a book. Um, it looks like almost like a planner or something. I don't know. It is very unique. I love it. <laughs> Let's go through my pile of modern classics. So the first one is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, which I still... <laughs> I still need to read. I know. I, I know. Um, I need to change that. This is such a groundbreaking book. 
I need to read it. Someone make me read this one, please. <laughs> then we have, oh, <laughs> it's upside down. Um, Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. I just read this book. <sighs> it broke my heart and I loved it. <laughs> I adored it. It is now one of my all time favorite books. That's all I'm gonna say. Plus it is stunning. It is, it is gorgeous. Such a heartbreaking story. It is heart wrenching, absolutely. But so honest and brutal and beautifully written loved it so much um okay so then i have a few of these classics there are the white covers and then this sort of mint green covers as well so first i have lolita by vladimir nabokov i didn't like this one um but i know what it is trying to do i appreciate it for that i guess but unfortunately it wasn't really for me but the cover is beautiful though <laughs> these are the modern penguin classics um then I also have from this collection Breakfast at Tiffany's by Truman Capote. I've only seen the movie, never read the book. Um, I love the movie mainly because of Audrey Hepburn, but I still need to read this one. Another one that I need to read and watch the movie is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This sounds like a crime, not having read this book. I know a lot of people are crazy about it. Um, I promise I will read it eventually. <laughs> Um, one that I have read is this one, We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. This was actually one of our Dark Academics book picks and I really enjoyed it. And then I also have A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. I tried reading this one and I couldn't. <laughs> one day I will try again, but it sounded way too complicated, although I was a little young when I tried reading this, mainly because I was obsessed with the movie, so maybe now I would have different thoughts about it. Um, I definitely need to try it again. I love the cover though. If you've seen the movie, you know why. A few random editions of books that I own. I've read all of these. Um, so we have The Canterville Ghost and Other Stories by Oscar Wilde in this very cool and creepy design a little bit. His short stories are also funny, but then they also have an emotional punch sometimes. I love them. The Color Purple by Alice Walker. I read this ages ago. I believe I actually buddy read this one with Lucy back in the day. Oh my gosh, that must have been like three years ago? Four years ago? I don't even know. Lucy, when did we read this? <laughs> I feel like this must have been our first buddy read when we first started talking. That sounds crazy to me, but I definitely need to reread this. Um, I remember the writing style not being exactly my taste, but the story. It is mandatory for you to read this book if you haven't already. And then same thing goes for The Bell Jar, actually. I appreciate it more than I enjoy it. Um, I don't think enjoying is the right word for this book, but nonetheless, I don't think it is for me exactly, but it does have some beautiful ideas, beautiful quotes. So this cover also is beautiful. It is actually one of my favorites. I like it a lot. It is the 50th, it is the 50th anniversary, 50th, 50th. This book is 50 years old and that's what this edition is celebrating. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> And then a few more of these vintage classics. I have read two of them and I still need to read another two. So first, I Captured the Castle by Dodie Smith. I read this one for my Patreon book club. In fact, I also uploaded an exclusive book review in case you are interested and would like to join me there. Um, really liked it. I didn't love it as much as I thought I would, but the characters were quite fun to read about. Then I have Beloved by Toni Morrison, which I absolutely want to read very soon, hopefully this year, I hope so. And um, then of course I have Brave New World by Alex Huxley. It's been a while since I read this one. I don't remember a lot of my thoughts about this book, but it is of course one of those big references when you talk about classics. And then I have A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. I really want to read this book because I've heard it is like watching the movie Midnight in Paris, which is one of my favorites from his perspective. And if that doesn't sound fascinating to you, I don't know what does, honestly. <laughs> Moving on to my wonderful Jane Austen collection. I love these editions so much. These are the vintage Jane Austen books. So we have, of course, Emma and then Mansfield Park. These are the two books by her that I still need to read, but Emma will be happening very soon. And then we have Sense and Sensibility. 
Pride and Prejudice, then Persuasion, and finally, <laughs> Northanger Abbey. Okay, I did it. <laughs> Look how absolutely magical this set looks together. I love these editions so much, and they even have a very cute detail in which when you open the first page, you have a design from one of the other books. So in this case, this is the design that you see on the cover of Northanger Abbey, but it is inside of this one. And that's such a nice touch. Um, once again, all of them have a quote on the back. This one says, Dear Papa, you cannot think that I will live off matchmaking. Yes, because this is about a matchmaker. I believe Emma is trying to bring together a few couples and then it doesn't always go well from what I can tell. So I'm very excited to read it and also Mansfield Park, of course, because these are the only two Jane Austen books that I still need to read. A few people have asked me if I could then do a ranking video of all of the novels and I have to be honest with you, I don't think it will happen. <laughs> because I am the worst. I am the absolute worst at ranking anything. You name it, I cannot do it. <laughs> I can't. I bet if I were to rank Jane Austen's books, I bet at least <laughs> three of them or four would take the second place. Because on my first place so far, it is Pride and Prejudice. I doubt it will change. We never know. But then all of the other ones, you know, they would be second place. I don't know, I cannot do that. So I'm sorry, I don't think that video will be happening, but I will, of course, let you know my thoughts as I read them and reread them. And I always have such a wonderful time reading Jane Austen books. They are such comfort reads to me. So this is my lovely collection of her books. And then moving on to what will be a struggle to take out of these shelves, because now we will move on to my Black Penguin Classics, my Oxford Classics, and then the Penguin English Library Classics. Wish me luck. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> this is the first half of my Penguin English Library Classics. These are some of my favorites, I always say this, not only because of the design, which is... can you guess it? It is beautiful, it is gorgeous, it is stunning but also because they are so floppy and I love floppy paperbacks. They are my favorite type of book. So again, we have Mansfield Park by Jane Austen, Emma by Jane Austen. Again, with all the details about the story, I don't know exactly what both of these mean because again, I still need to read them, but I just love all the attention to detail in these covers. Two books that I have read are Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens and Tess of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy. I plan to reread Oliver Twist eventually because I read it a long time ago and I'm not sure I would still enjoy it as much but it was the first book that I read by Dickens and because of that I then read A Christmas Carol and A Tale of Two Cities so it has been a good journey overall but I don't know if I would enjoy this one as much if I read it now but Tess of the D'Urbervilles is amazing, I highly recommend it. North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell is a book that I am planning to read very soon. In fact, I am planning to buddy with this one with Lucy and Sarah, so we'll see how I feel about this one. I think I'm gonna love it. Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte is a book that I want to give a second chance to because I read it, I believe it was maybe two or three years ago, I can't remember. Um, and I didn't love it. I really didn't love it, especially the ending and the whole romance involved here. It really wasn't my cup of tea. I don't like the movie at all. Um, I don't know, maybe my opinion will change once I reread it. Maybe now that I know what will happen, I can maybe pay close attention to all the other details and to the writing itself, because I did love the writing style and I loved Jane as a protagonist, but other than that, Something about the story really didn't click for me, but we'll see, that might change. I still need to read Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell, but I am planning to read this one after I finish North and South, so we'll see how that goes. And then the biggest book that I own of this collection, I am so proud to say I did read it, <laughs> and it is Middlemarch by George Eliot. I believe read this one with Kira, we have a whole live show about it. It was such a lovely reading experience, and reading it with her and all of the people who joined us, it was 
amazing um, and I really enjoyed this one. I initially gave it three stars but now I changed it to four stars because I cannot deny this book is incredible. It is a masterpiece, it is so well written and um, definitely one of the best books I've read so far this year. So that's the first half. Now let me grab the second half of this books. <laughs> Hello, hello, Mary from the future here. <laughs> um, I do apologize for the change of scenery, but unfortunately a few files from this video were corrupted. I'm not sure why, but I did lose them. So I'm just gonna quickly refilm this little section of the video where I was talking about my Penguin English Library Classics. So let's move on to the second half of that collection in which we have all of these books. So let me quickly go through them. First, of course, we have A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, which is a favorite. Again, I love this copy so much. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And this one is a weird one for me because I'm actually not sure if I've ever read it. I feel like I've said this last year as well, but someday I do plan to either read it or reread it. I'm not entirely sure. I do know the story, but I don't know if I watched a lot of movie adaptations. And so I think I read the book. I cannot. I honestly Honestly cannot remember it is so weird but anyhow I do own this one then we have a room with the view by E.M. Forster I need to try some more of his books because I really enjoyed this one I do believe it is perfect to read during summer as well then I have Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf which I haven't read yet but I do plan to try one of her books very soon um, so we'll see if I like her writing style this has a lot of mixed reviews I feel like but it does sound quite interesting then we have two other books that I haven't read, two very reddish books. <laughs> so we have The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne and also The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. They are both big references in literature um, and I've seen a lot of mixed reviews for both of them. This is the one that intrigues me the most, The Scarlet Letter. It does have a very interesting premise, so hopefully I will also read it this year. Then two bluish books, um, I do have The Mer Others in the Rue Morgue and Other Tales by Edgar Allan Poe. I have read this one, I cannot remember if I've read the entirety of this collection, but I do believe I've read at least most of his tales. And then I also have Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, which I have read and plan to reread eventually because I really enjoyed it. And my last two from this collection are these beauties. First of all, we have The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte, which everyone should read. I am so sad by the fact that Anne Bronte doesn't get the recognition she deserves. I absolutely love her books. I only wish she had written more because I've now read both of her novels, which is amazing but also sad because I wish I had more. I absolutely love her books and this is so ahead of its time. It is amazing. I highly recommend it. And then I have one that I haven't read, which is Our End by E.M. Forster, which again, I did like A Room with a View by him and I am looking forward to reading more of his works. So maybe this will be my next one. And those were all of my Penguin English Library classics. I adore them to pieces. And now we'll move on to the rest of these shelves. So I have my Black Penguin classics, my Oxford classics, and then a couple other random editions that I will show you in a minute. Okay, here are the Black Penguin classics. Let's go through them as well. I'm gonna quickly tell you which ones I have read or not. So we have Letters to a Young Poet by Rainer Maria Rilke. I loved this book but I feel like it's one of those that I need to reread to fully grasp the meaning of every single word that's written here and I do want to check out more of his works because I feel like he could become a possible favorite author. We'll see. The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. It was one of our picks for the Dark Academics book club and I really enjoyed it as well. Julius Caesar, read it, loved it too. Another Dark Academics book club pick. Two books that I haven't read. We have another E.M. Forster. And actually, I think this one might be the next by him that I read, actually. So this is Morris by E.M. Forster. And then I also have this collection of Greek stories. It is called The Oresteia. The Oresteia, I'm not sure. Um, I will look up all the pronunciations right when I read this book because I'm guessing I will say all of them wrong. <laughs> So I will definitely look them up, but it is stunning and I've heard incredible things about it. 
The Fall of the House of Usher and Other Writings by Edgar Allan Poe. Again, I believe I must have read the majority of the stories. I did start reading this edition but never finished it, so I need to work on that as well, but I'm pretty sure I've read most of these stories. The Importance of Being Earnest and Other Plays by Oscar Wilde. This I haven't read and I really need to correct that because, again, I love Oscar Wilde and I really want to read more of his plays and short stories and everything and and this sounds like the perfect edition to do so. One that I have read is Childhood, Boyhood, Youth by Leo Tolstoy, which is, I believe, his first book. Um, I didn't love this one, but you can already see the potential for a great author, which he is indeed. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, of course, one of my favorite books of all time. I had to have it and I can never get enough of editions <laughs> of this stunning book. Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte, again, a book that I loved. I think it is severely underrated and I wish more people read this one. And then I don't think I've read any of these three. So I have Waverly by Sir Walter Scott, which I bought when I went to Scotland. So I have very fond memories of buying this book and I'm really hoping to visit Scotland again as soon as possible. But when I went there, I did buy this big classic, Shirley by Charlotte Bronte. I did start reading this one, but I don't think I was in the mood for it when I started it, so I do plan to give it another try because the writing is beautiful, I just wasn't really um, in the right mind space for it, I guess. But I am planning to try this one soon again. Oh, actually, there's two more. <laughs> so we have The Portable Edgar Allan Poe, which is edited by J. Gerald Kennedy. I haven't read this one yet, nor this one which is the complete edition of the Divine Comedy by Dante. Um, I think I will read it from this edition, although I might read Inferno from the other edition that I own as well, because it does have the Italian version, which I think is amazing, but this one is stunning as well. Here are the Oxford classics. These are some of my favorites as well. They all are, right? <laughs> But I love these editions and the fact that they always have such a good introduction to the book itself with some context and everything. They are incredible. Um, I will go through this very quickly because I haven't read most of them. I think I only read two, so I definitely need to change that. But I'm very lucky because most of these were gifts, actually, and I do plan to read all of them eventually, of course. But Yes, let's go quickly through them. So again, another copy of Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare, which I've read, and this might be my favorite edition of this book, honestly. I think it looks stunning. Then we have um, Zofloye or the Moor by Charlotte Dacre, or Dacre, I'm not sure, um, but it is a tale of lust, betrayal, and multiple murder set in Venice in the last days of the 15th century. I'm so excited to read this one. Then I have this stunning edition of some of Rilke's selected poems. It is, um, it does have the parallel German text as well, which is amazing, and it is translated by Susan Ranson and Mariel Sutherland. I do plan to read each one of these works separately, um, so I can read the entirety of each one of them, but it is always so nice to own one of these collections. Another edition of Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. I am planning to read this one this year, hopefully. The only other book that I've read from this collection is this one. This is The Complete Short Stories by Oscar Wilde, and of course, I loved it. <laughs> I also have Faust by Goethe, or Goethe? Goethe? Oh my gosh, I'm sorry about the pronunciation. I think I always say names so wrong, so I do apologize. I will look it up eventually, of course, once I read it. But um, this is one of those books that intimidates me the most, but on the other hand, it looks fascinating. It is translated by David Luke. A book that I would love to read this Halloween, and I really hope it happens, is The Monk by Matthew Lewis. It sounds and looks so creepy. I love it. Um, it is a sensational story of temptation and depravity, a masterpiece of gothic fiction. Yes. <laughs> Next, I have another Shakespearean play, and that's Anthony and Cleopatra, gorgeous as well. Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. I saw a movie adaptation, I believe, when I was a kid, um, so I've heard of this story ever since I can remember, and it's one of those that I definitely want to read eventually too. I want to read all of them, of course, but... <laughs> 
Next we have this beautiful edition of The Flowers of Evil by Charles Baudelaire. It is a translation by James McGowan um, and it does have the parallel French text. I love these editions so much. And then I have the three biggest books of this collection, I think. So first I have The Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens, which I just started listening to the audiobook of this one because it was one of the picks for the Dickens vs. Tolstoy book club hosted by my dear friends Emma and Carolyn. So I am trying to catch up and I'm only now reading this one, but I am slowly making some progress on it. <laughs> Then I have The Mysteries of Udolpho by Anne Radcliffe, which I would like to read this Halloween too, maybe, we'll see. And then one of the most beautiful covers ever. This is a collection of the major words from Percy Shelley. It includes poetry, prose and drama, and it is glorious. <laughs> To continue with this bookshelf right here, I do have three beautiful separate editions of three books that I really want to show you because they are absolutely stunning. The first one, of course, is this beautiful illustrated edition of Pride and Prejudice. It is one of the most beautiful books I own. I adore it so much. Oh my gosh, look at these illustrations, both on the front and on the back of the book. It is absolutely perfect and it does of course have illustrations inside as well here's one example it even is a little interactive oh my gosh can you look at that wow <laughs> this is magic happening right here um it is such a glorious book i mean i love every single thing about it of course it does have some beautiful details here and there um and then oh my gosh look at it it's so stunning, I love it so much. Here's another one, of course. <laughs> so yes, just to give you a little look at what this book is like, um, it is absolutely stunning. And of course, one of my favorite books of all time. I do always try to keep it on display on my bookshelves because it deserves it, doesn't it? <laughs> A simpler edition that I am also obsessed with. It is so beautiful in its simplicity and it is this one. This is from the Faber Classics edition and it is Tess of the Durbervilles by Thomas Hardy, which again I have read, really enjoyed it and when I saw this cover it just spoke to me um, because I do think with very few elements it tells a lot about this story and I completely fell in love with it. It's so pretty, I love it. Um, and then I have one of my favorite editions that I own and that's this one from Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes because I was looking for a good edition to read this book from because it is massive, right? So I really wanted a big paperback, a tall paperback they are my favorites, um, like this one. And then it is also probably the floppiest book I own. Can you see that? <laughs> no matter where I stop, it just stays there. Like, even at the start of this book, it is quite easy to just... It, it just lays there. <laughs> and this makes me so happy. I don't know if you are like me and you are obsessed with this type of book, but... Just look at it, you can put it down while you are eating something or doing anything else. You can just put it down and read it very comfortably and that's such a nice feeling. I love it. <laughs> this edition is translated by Edith Grossman with an introduction by Harold Bloom. I was trying to look for the edition. Which one is it? It's published by Harper Collins. Okay, so yes, that's this one. I think it is perfect. Um, I will not link all the books in this video, of course, because there are too many. But if you would like me to link any specific edition that I show on this video, just let me know and I will try to link it for you, of course. But yes, that's this one. Now let's move on to the other books that I have right there. Starting with these tiny ones, the first ones being, of course, the Macmillan collection, which are these little books. They always have such a nice look to them. Um, they are so tiny and cute and I love the gold pages as well. They are beautiful. 
So let's see, from this collection I have Love Letters of Great Men, which is edited by Ursula Doyle. This is a reference to <laughs> the Sex and the City movies, which um, I was gifted this by one of my dear friends and it is kind of a private joke between us because we both love Sex and the City and this is one of the books that the protagonist is reading in one of those movies. So it was a very cute gift of her and I am definitely looking forward to reading this one because I am a hope plus romantic. I do love a good love letter. <laughs> Speaking of being romantic and loving everything that has to do with that, I also own Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. I've never read anything by him. I don't know how that's possible, but I am planning to change that, of course. Then another edition of Tales and Poems by Edgar Allan Poe. I love it, it's so creepy. And of course, no one's surprised, another edition of The Picture of Dorian Gray. This one is very spooky as well, very fitting for the type of story it is. Another collection by Oscar Wilde. <laughs> this one is called The Happy Prince and Other Stories. Um, I, for some reason, never read these editions in a row. I just read a couple of stories here and there, so I might have read the entirety of this collection already, but I might check out if there are any stories here that I still need to read. But anyhow, it's adorable. Um, and then finally, I have Double Nurse by James Joyce, which I've never read anything by him. A few people have recommended me to start with this one um, for his books, so I might do that. I also own this little black classic. Um, I really wish I owned more of these. They are so cute, um, they are really called Penguin Little Black Classics, and that's adorable. <laughs> but this is the only one I own, and it is Aphorisms on Love and Hate by Friedrich Nietzsche. I still need to read this one, but I have read a few texts by him, not a book per se, but just a few of his ideas, and they are always interesting to read about, even if you don't agree necessarily with everything he says, but I do still think it is worthy um, of reading at least once in your lifetime, you know? And I also own two books from the Everyman's Library Pocket Poets. So first I have this gorgeous collection um, of Keats poetry, which again, I've never read. I don't know why, but hopefully that will change. I actually have an idea for a video where this one might fit for that, I think. <laughs> we'll see. Um, and then I also own this little book of Poems Bewitched and Hunted, which I have read, I believe it was two years ago already, yes, during Halloween, and it has a lot of famous authors that I knew already, but it also introduced me to a whole lot more, which is always lovely, and it is filled with spooky poems, very appropriate for the Halloween season, of course. <laughs> And finally, from that bookshelf, I also own these four incredibly stunning books. These are some of my favorite editions, and they're not all from the same one. I just like to keep them together because they are quite similar. But first we have these editions, which are the Penguin Deluxe Classics. And are you ready? <laughs> I don't think you are. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How insanely stunning are they? Oh my gosh. Okay, we have Dracula by Bram Stoker and Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. They're so creepy. I adore them. Oh my gosh. And then the back. Can you see that? I mean, <laughs> I am completely obsessed with these covers. They are some of my absolute favorites. I don't even know how I found them. I think it is Kira who also loves them, so I must have seen a couple on one of her videos, and I am so thankful for that because now I want to own every single one of these editions, I swear. Like, how <laughs> they are amazing. On a similar tone, I would say, even though these are way cuter than these ones. These are the creepy books and these are the adorable books. <laughs> these are called the Penguin Threads Classics and oh my gosh, they are so pretty. I can't handle it, I swear. Um, we have The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum and also The Secret Garden by Frances Hudson Burnett. They I don't even know what to say. I mean, look, both front and back, these ones even have a little quote on the back and they are just... they... <laughs> I don't know how you can create such beautiful art. Um, you know what they say, don't judge a book by their cover? How? <laughs> As for some other random beautiful editions, I have these three. So the first one is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, which you can usually see on the background of my videos right there. There. <laughs> 
this is one of the Barnes and Noble's classics and <laughs> I have no words truly I think the combination of colors purple and green and when you open it like this very pretty pattern it is very eye-catching and you immediately want to read this book don't you I mean if you saw this at a bookstore wouldn't you want to pick it up yes you would <laughs> it also has a beautiful quote here it says if it were I who was to be always young and the picture that was to grow old for that for that I would give everything if you know you know <laughs> I love it um, then I also have this beautiful edition of the little women series so this includes little women little men I think yes Joe's boys and good wives okay that's the second one so we have little women good wives Little Men and Joe's Boys. All four books are included in this edition, which is stunning. It has that old vintage vibe to it. Um, it does remind me a lot of my old childhood books for some reason. I don't know. I look at it and it just gives me this feeling of nostalgia. I don't know. I love it. It is so simple, but I always have it on display on my bookshelves as well. And another one that I like to keep on display too is this edition of Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, which is an amazing book as well. It's all white, so maybe a little harder to show you, but hopefully you can see that. Again, it is such a simple design, but honestly, I knew nothing about this book. And when I saw this cover, I immediately picked it up. <laughs> and I am so glad I did because I absolutely love this book so i also want to show you these stunning editions these are exclusive cover designs from a website called bookishly they create some bookish subscription boxes inspired by classics i love them and these on the inside they are copies of the words word classics so there you go but then they do design these exclusive book covers and i just think they are absolutely stunning so this one is for romeo and juliet by william shakespeare can you see that and then these ones are for limits of course we have part one and part two they look so pretty i love them I love them and I do love their company. I wish I could buy everything of their website, but unfortunately that's not possible. <laughs> I also own the entirety of the Russian vintage classics. These look glorious together. So we have, let me see, War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy, which is obviously the biggest one. I am slowly making my way through this one. It will take me a while, but I am pretty sure I'm going to love it. Next, we have, of course, Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy, which I have read, loved it completely. Of course, it is stunning. Such a good book. Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I actually read this one right at the start of this year. Really enjoyed it as well. I am truly looking forward to getting more into Russian literature. So I am so happy that I at least have three more of this collection, which I still need to read. So we have Life and Fate by Vasily Grossman. I don't know much about this one, but I do really want to read it. Plus, this cover is so cool. I love it. And then there is, of course, Dr. Jivago and the Master and Margarita. These, I feel like, are the ones that I want to read the most um, right after War and Peace. Maybe the Master and Margarita, because Dr. Jivago, for some reason, intimidates me a lot. <laughs> I will read it eventually, of course, but I might have to try and find someone who would like to buddy with this one with me. Or maybe a read-along? I don't know. I think that would be fun. Maybe a read-along of some Russian classics? That's something to think about, definitely. <laughs> and finally, I believe the last classics that I was talking to you about before the files got corrupted, unfortunately, were these ones. These are the Tales of Mystery and the Supernatural. So we have In a Glass Darkly by Sheridan Le Fanu, I think. Um, still need to read this one, but I really like the cover. Um, it doesn't say much about the story, I don't think, but that's honestly one of the reasons why I love these covers so much. They are quite simple, but very appealing to me. Then we have The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins, which is definitely on my TBR as well. Maybe for this fall, we'll see. 
And of course, The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. I love this book. I did read it a few years ago and then reread it um, with The Dark Academics. And I loved talking about this book with all of you. There were definitely a lot of mixed opinions, <laughs> but it was so much fun. And I also absolutely love the movie and the musical, especially with my entire heart. Um, it was the first contact that I had with this story. And I never looked back because it is now part of who I am. So I love this book as well. Then we have Sweeney Todd, The String of Pearls by James Malcolm Reimer. For this one, I tried reading the book and wasn't the biggest fan, although I love the movie so much and the musical as well, but the book wasn't working for me for some reason. And then I also have The Castle of Otranto, um, which I still need to read as well. But this is such a big reference in the gothic genre, so I'm hoping to get to it soon. These are some random classics that I picked up at a thrifted bookstore, which I love. And these are all stunning, so let me quickly go through them. First we have Silas Marner by George Eliot, because I do want to read more books by her after reading Middlemarch, of course. Then The Trumpet Major by Thomas Hardy, again, I want to read more books by him. The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James. The Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy, again. Dumby and Son by Charles Dickens. Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray, I haven't heard a lot of great things about this one, but I am still very curious. And then I have this beautiful edition of The Bell by Iris Murdoch. It smells like a library room, I swear to you. I'm in love with it. <laughs> All of these were amazing finds and I have a few more to show you. So the last books that I got in a thrifted bookstore were these ones. We have The Golden Treasury by Frances Turner Palgrave or Palgrave, I'm not sure. Then Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy, which is supposed to be the masculine version of Tess of the Durbervilles, or so I've heard, but it is supposed to be worse, so let's see how that goes. <laughs> then The Old Curiosity Shop by Charles Dickens once again, um, The Mayor of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy, I am slowly trying to collect all of his books, as you can see, <laughs> and then What Maisie Knew by Henry James. Henry James is an author that also intrigues me a lot, um, so I am planning to read more of his works as well. And then finally, to really finish this video, I think um, I have some of the Alma classics. These were all gifts from my mom. She is very kindly trying to collect all of these books for me, which is so nice of her. Um, so I have The Green Dwarf and Other Early Fiction by Charlotte Bronte, which I still need to read. Then The Professor by Charlotte Bronte as well, still need to read too. Um, then Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte, which again, absolutely love. Please read her books. And then finally, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, which again, I need to give a second chance to. These are stunning as well. They have this rubbery um, feeling to them, but they are quite soft. Um, and they have some pictures right at the start of the book um, of the places that matter to the Bronte family, like where they lived, where they were born, their family portraits and everything. I think that's such a nice detail and I really, really love these editions as well. They look so nice together. Um, but yes, oh my gosh, I think that's it. <laughs> Those are all of my classic books, I think. It also depends on what you would consider a classic, because of course I also own The Lord of the Rings, for instance, which is a fantasy classic. So I could have a few more that you would consider appropriate for this video. So. I might have missed a few, but I think <laughs> that's at least the majority of my classic books and I adore all of them. Apologies once again, because I feel like this video will not end ever. <laughs> I will also leave you with a few pictures of books that I have on my upper shelves, because I do still have some books um, of fairy tales and some other editions of Alice in Wonderland. So I will try and film a little shot of those books as well. but. I really hope this was somewhat entertaining. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I would love to know again if you have any favorite editions or what are some of your favorite classic books. I love knowing about that. So if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. I don't know how, but I applaud you. Thank you. 
thank you anyway for being here um, as always i hope you're doing very well and having a lovely day and i will see you again very soon on my next video bye